Hey guys, welcome back for an encouraging word. Um, I have just been so touched by the Lord today, um, even <laughs> into tears of just how amazing God is. And I wanted to share with you the scriptures that I go back to when I'm just needing a God moment. I'm just needing to see my God just exalted and high and just to magnify him. And today through his word and through just a touch of his Holy Spirit, I was so excited to remember that God is um, amazing and wonderful and merciful and kind and magnificent and strong and just so uh, beautiful and so in control of everything. And, you know, in, in these hard times and when we get perplexed and we're just looking about the world, trying to find answers and what is the truth and media is happening all over, the news is just yelling at us things, the world is happening and yelling at us and pushing us and pressuring us. It's so good just to take a moment to say no, no more. I'm gonna take a stop, I'm gonna take a sela as they have it in the Psalms and just stop and rest and think about our God. Um, and would you come with me just to magnify the Lord with me? And what does that mean to magnify? It's put God huge back in his rightful place in our lives, in our thoughts, in our emotions, in our day, you know, and uh, God has given just a bit of a break from this world um, system that we have. And so take this um, opportunity to magnify God. And, and I just want to encourage you that God loves you. God being so big. It says in the scriptures, he holds the universe. He spans it in his hand. You know, and when you guys, when we go through trials in life, I want to encourage you to do something that you might not have done before. And it's my secret in uh, trials and tribulations and unknown and uncertain times where I go in the scriptures and where I find my comfort is Job. Yep, you got it, Job. Job through, went through such a hard time in life. Not only did um, Satan buffet him, Satan was allowed to still kill and destroy in Job's life. He um, killed his children. He had 10 children. He uh, Satan wiped them out. Job was a very wealthy man. His finances were wiped out. And then his health was wiped out to a point of weakness, but not unto death. And all of this, um, Job still held on to his, his communication with the Lord. And um, as you know in the story of Job, I'm not going to get into He has what's called the Job's comforters. He had people coming alongside him trying to reason out life. Like, why did this happen to Job? And a lot of foolish talking was going on. Um, and even, even in Job, Job started to um, utter some foolish things. And then God intervenes and speaks to Job. These scriptures have been my life rescue in the midst of trial, in the midst of uncertainty. And so something I'm going to encourage you with is um, if you have a Bible app, I use Bible Gateway for an audio Bible. I want you to put in Job 38 and I want you to listen to it till the end. Job 38, 39, 40. And all the way to, I think it's 43. Um, and I want you to listen to the Bible out loud. Um, I'm sorry, it's Job. Job 42. Did I say 32? I don't know. I, what does it say? It's Job uh, 42. Um, so Job 38. Sorry, to Job 32. And I want you to listen to this. You can read it. And that's fine, but it's super powerful to listen to. Um, and I like Bible uh, Gateway for Audio Bible. You can, you can. Um, what I'm trying to say, the translations, they have different audio um, people talk for the different translations. And why do I love this passage? Because Job, listen to what Job, the Lord says. And the Lord answered Job out of a whirlwind and says, Who is... Is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now, prepare yourself like a man, and I will question you, 
and you shall answer me. So God was saying, okay, enough is enough. I've heard all that you guys are saying. And he calls it dark counsel by words without knowledge. Here they're groping in life to try to figure out what happened and why this was all happening to Job. And they didn't have understanding. They didn't have proper knowledge. They weren't in the heavenly throne room when the, when Satan came in to, you know, uh, who wanted to buffet Job. And, and, uh, and God was excited and pleased with Job. And he didn't have any of that, you know. And I think it's funny because even Peter... Um, in the New Testament, Jesus says, Hey, Peter, Satan's asked to sift you like wheat. And you're like, whoa. So we have an enemy, Satan, who seeks to roar like a roaring lion, who seeks to who he can devour. But the neat thing we learn about this is God has, has a stopping point, a protective shield, and then he says no to no to Satan. But Satan comes to still kill and destroy. Um, but what I love about this is when God speaks. And God takes... Um, Job and my kids call it like a virtual reality and he takes him and he shows him he says hey in verse 4 where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth tell me if you under have understanding and basically boom here comes the boom of God where were you when I laid down the foundations of the earth God is declaring that he made this earth. That's my dog. Oh, God is also instructive. In <laughs> yes, I hear you. We're talking about God. Maybe she's excited about it too. And it goes back to Genesis where it says, In the beginning God created. And God takes Job through his creative process. He talks about the constellations. Hey, can you put them in? Can you map the constellations through the different seasons of the earth? Can you even break up Orion's belt? Hey, Job, tell me. And it really is this magnus, magni, magnifying of God in Job's eyes. And it was like, whoa. And God goes on point after point after point. He was loving Job, but he's taking Job through this journey of who am I? Remember who I am, Job. Remember that I formed the earth. Remember that I put the foundations. I put the cornerstones. Remember in verse 7, the morning stars sang together and the Son of God shouted for joy. Who put the seas in the doors and told them where to stop? It says in um, Job 38, 10, And when I fixed my limit for it and set the bars of the door, when I said to the ocean and and the sea this is as far as you can come no further and here our proud waves must stop have you ever been to the ocean have you ever seen the great swell that the surfers love why does it stop why doesn't it keep coming on to land the bible says that god told it he put that eternal boundary of where to go God is the one and the maker of all these things. He is the one. And, and I have to just give out a shout out to God. I mean, it's over and over and over and over in Job 38. And God and, um, and, and just continues to go on. And Job finally answers and basically acknowledges before the Lord. You know, he's like, Lord, I'm undone. Um, you are your God, you know. And... God is gently reminding him who he is. And guys, we need to be reminded about who our God is. I'm looking down here because, um, of course, I didn't like map it out today because I was just so excited from it. And, um, and Job answered, Behold, in Job 40, I am vile. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand over my mouth. It says, Once I have spoken and I will not answer, but twice... Um, I will proceed no further. And he says, it goes on in, in, in Job. And, and eventually Job, I think in, oh, I love verse um, chapter 41. It talks about the dinosaurs. It talks about God creating the dinosaurs with man. It talks about all the science stuff, guys. And I think it's so important that you guys continue to educate your kids on the creation story. It's not a story. The creation um, testimony of God because Job has so much full of that God created and um, 
I am just telling you, we got to get back to the creation. Um, Genesis 1, God created everything. John 1, 1, it says, all things were made by him, Jesus, and without him was, was not anything made that was made. And then Acts 17, Paul goes to um, Athens and tells them, hey, you guys, I want to talk to you about this unknown God that you have as an altar Acts 17, 24, the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. Amazing, amazing. But getting back to Job, it's this, this shout out of creation. I think that's why I love walking in the, um, the paths lately and just taking pictures of flowers because God's creation shouts out, I am alive, I am the maker of all things, and I am. I have called this. Um, God is doing something here on this earth, you guys. He's got it all planned out. Um, we looked about, it. Just it's just blowing my mind because <sighs> there's a scripture in Ezekiel when he's talking about, I was talking about the prophecy of the Russian war, and I know I gotta wrap it up real quick, but um, he says, I said it, it's gonna happen. It's done. When God declares something, it's going to happen. You can guarantee it a hundred million zillion percent. But not today. I not want to get into that. I want to get into you to magnify the Lord. I want you to get into Job. I want you to see that God says, I'm the one who flung those stars. I am the one who um, did not give wisdom to that ostrich. I am the one who built that eagle. I am created that eagle. I am the one who did all these things. And Job's response eventually was... Um, he says, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. And he says, um, verse Job 42.5, I have heard you by the hearing of my ears, but now I my eyes see you. Therefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. You guys, God is here for us, and he wants you to magnify him in your life. He wants you to put him beyond uh, coronavirus, beyond um, Trump in the election, beyond what's happening in the global community. My kids are getting all this stuff for global homestays and Pepsi, global this. Yes, we already know that because <laughs> God told us first that he's gonna, that, that at the end there will be this global community effort coming, but he is ultimately in control. And this 10 world toes system that's coming, these 10 Confederate nations, the big stone, the picture in Daniel, is going to roll it out and God is going to establish his throne here on this earth. You can bank on it. You can be assured of it. And um, you can just be excited to know that our God is alive, that he's given us eternal life, that he is amazing, that he can change the king's heart any way he wants, that he holds our very breath in his hands, that he loves you, that every hair on your head is numbered and counted, and you're, if you're his child, he is with you even to the end of the age. He is not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. He's right here, and he's the one that has the storehouses of hailstones stored up of snow and hellstone prepared for the day of war our god is huge he's amazing like i said not only has he spanned the universe in his hand but he's written your name in the palm of his hand because he loves you so much get in i encourage you job um what did i say 38 to 42 and let god be magnified in your life it has helped me today and it's strengthened me today and i want that to be your strength today in jesus name in jesus name his holy precious name amen and have a great day and comment below if you have and and tell me what a wonderful thing it, it was for you too um god bless you guys have a great great day